Hello and welcome to today's video. This is the gate drivers for the bidirectional buck boost converter. So if you remember last video, uh, we went over the schematic and this is, well, so this little block that says gate driver is these, so this drives the top IGBT, that drives the bottom IGBT, and you can see you got the transformer, bridge rectifier, linear regulators, bypass cap, or just bulk and bypass caps and then the actual gate driver itself, and then all the support components to protect the uh, IGBT. And that has all been put on here. The only thing that's not on the schematic that I've added, um, I got uh, little green LEDs in there for one on, this is on the uh, uh, negative nine supply, positive 15 supply, 15 supply, and negative nine supply. And that's just because when I had it running, it was humming a bit, and it didn't, or was singing, and it's just because it didn't have enough load on the switch mode supply. So that adds a little bit of uh, load on there to keep that from quiet that down. Um, actually, when it's running, it's it's actually nice and perfectly quiet. But when it's an idle, it doesn't quite draw enough current. Probably should have give me you know, uh, changed the resistor value to draw a bit more current from the LEDs. But it works. Um, other than that, the only uh, interesting thing is I put the uh, 1.2 kilovolt diodes. For the saturation detector in the uh, cable here so that this keeps you know the high voltage is only up to this point and then after that it's, it's that and then this is also a 600 volt wire but no current should be flowing this direction current should only ever flow that way and it's just from negative 9 volts to detect if it the uh, IGBT is saturated or not so but I didn't want that really high voltage on the board um, each one of these guys each sides could potentially have 500 volt difference between the two so that's why it's slit keep things from arcing across there and then the back side it's all point to point there's no components on the back and a couple zip ties are holding in the uh, the two uh, transformers other than that uh, I think uh, it's looking pretty good um, we're gonna fire it up here in a second it's um, oh, let me see if I can be able to do this here I've uh, got the uh, DMOC adapter here and I've tapped off of its uh, transformer the um, primary side and we're going to just it doesn't matter which direction this gets plugged in because it's just push-pull and we'll go ahead and plug that in and this is just 12 volts and I've just got this board program to just run the uh, switch mode supply and, and blink the blinky so here we go turn it on and she's running. So we got all the supplies going. This blinky's blinking, telling me that this is running. And these guys are happily going along. We should have uh, all the voltages present. And uh, yeah, I think we'll. I'll go ahead and hook it up to the scope here, so we can see that that's working. And give me one second while I hopefully pause it and get everything set up in five minutes before it stops recording. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> I got everything hooked up, so we're now running. I've got uh, I didn't I didn't hook the uh, the probe up to the, um, the these two wires, but I've I've got them hooked up to the little protection diodes that are in there that are soldered to it. So I got the scope on the output of the IGBT driver, and I've got the function generator plugged in here to the the two lines on the. Um, IGBT driver. It's a uh, optically coupled uh, input there. So essentially, I've got my function generator connected here. It's outputting uh, 20 kilohertz with a, at a random duty cycle, and then we are monitoring the output right across these two points here, which will give us our gate emitter voltage drive. So we should see a around positive 15 volts high and negative 9 volts low to shut it down. And if we look on the scope, we see this is my, this is 20 kilohertz. We got the function generator set to 20 kilohertz. And this is our negative 9 volts. So we're on 5 volts of division. So 5, negative 9, and 5, 10, oops, yeah, where am I at? Yeah, 5, 10, 15 volts. So we lose about a volt on either side through the uh, gate driver, but that's plenty plenty good to turn on and off the MOSFET. And if you can, the sump pump turns off here in a second. 
Okay, well, I'll just keep talking. Um, I was going to say, in, in a second, when it turns off, you might be able to hear that whine that it's still making. Um, the, uh, that's because I'm not actually driving the load. It's open. This is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Oh, there you go. Now the sump pumps off. So if I get really close, can you hear that whine? Probably can't hear it over the horrible fan in my laptop. But if I go to the data sheet here for the uh, IGBTs, and you'll excuse me, it's on my CRT here. You can see that the uh, input capacitance is 110 nanofarad. So we're going to simulate that with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And right here, so it's a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And if you, we'll see if you can hear that on the video, but when I uh, actually put this in as if it's driving the gate of, a, of the IGBT, you'll hear that that wine goes away because it's actually loaded. Can you tell the difference between that? So the wine's gone. Now it's back. That's gone. That's back. Probably can't tell the difference, but... Anyways, that little wine that's there is just because it's running. Um, actually, you know what? Here, let me leave this in. So you got that crammed in there. So here's the uh, the scope with that on there. You can see it's cleanly turning on. I don't know why it's not focusing, but uh, there it goes. So we got a decent turn on, turn off time. It's not too bad for this gate driver. And it looks like we are Taking it's hard to look at the, the screen of the phone and adjust the knobs on the scope at the same time. But uh, it looks like we're fully off in what are we at? One microsecond, so one microsecond of division. It's not too bad. But uh, that'll get the job done for what we're doing here. So, yep, that looks good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you can see I've got a clip lead going between here. This is the saturation protection circuit. So, if I were to uh, we'll go ahead and expand this out really far. So, I'm, what I'm going to do is actually unplug it. And now it thinks that the MOSFET, or the IGBT, is, is saturated. So, you can see it does a little attempt to turn on, then it just keeps it low. And it does an attempt to turn on, and it keeps it low. And that's because it thinks right now, the driver thinks that I've shorted out my my uh, IGBT. So that's part of the saturation detected detection to protect it from being short-circuited. So if I hook that back up, you can see now I'm switching like I normally would. So that works. Uh, I've tested both sides. Uh, they both work fine. Everything looks good. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's it for this video. Um, I gotta get this mounted over on the, uh, the actual, uh, I guess the heat sink. <laughs> I gotta drill, drill and tap a hole in there for this side. And we'll get that mounted on there. And, uh, might have, might do some, uh, I'm gonna take everything off of it and cut some pieces and stuff to build out all the high current wiring and get uh, everything in there. But, oh, and I also need to build some uh, voltage dividers because be this guy's got to be able to read uh, 500 volts. I think I'll do uh, scale it for 100 volts input and uh, 550 volt output because my input capacitor is only rated to 100 volts and my output capacitor is only rated 550 volts. And I'll probably only run up around 60 volts or so because, uh, you know, 48 volts, uh, the four 12 volt batteries fully charged would be 15 volts each so that'd be 60 volts um, then I've also got uh, the possibility when I do the uh, when I finally upgrade the truck to the lithium ion batteries I'll have four of those left over and those are 7.5 volts a module or no I'll have eight of those left over so 7.5 volts a module times 
times eight uh, volts or eight modules. So that'd be a little higher. They'd be around sixty some volts, and uh, we would uh, could be able to run, might be able to run that off of uh, run it off of that as well. So yeah. Anyways, I'm just rambling now, but uh, this all works. It's uh, doing pretty good, and uh, I think uh, this will be promising to get the bidirectional buck boost converter up and running. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye.